good morning sunday july 21st 7:38. day 13 or 14 what is this i can't keep up um i'm gonna tell y'all just give me like two seconds two seconds sunday july day 13. so today we have two exams today a procedural validation and then a knowledge validation so i had a nightmare last night y'all that i failed today's test i did my retake and i failed again <laughs> oh that's definitely not um it's not gonna happen we're not even gonna speak that into existence i don't know why the devil was riding my dreams but he needs to go on about his business um but yeah so i think it's kind of a long day too like we go to class at 8.30 and we get out at 4.15. Well, I guess 5.15. Um, on a Sunday. <laughs> on a Sunday. I think it's that part. Because last Sunday we were off. Last Sunday was our first off day. So, it just feels like you should be off on Sundays. You know, like we should just have that one set day of the week that we're off. But we were off on Friday and then we go again until next Friday. So this is a six day stretch for us. Um, but anyways, I'm about to run downstairs, get some breakfast. I left my water bottle in my car so I need to go get that. And go to class and pass all my tests on the first try. All right. See y'all later. So I told y'all yesterday that I was going to get 100 today. I think I told y'all that. Did I tell y'all that? Well, I planned on getting 100, and I got 100. Brittany got 100, too. Ooh. <laughs> Whoa, there it is. Um, but with that being said, I do think this is the easiest test that we've taken so far out of the three knowledge validation exams that we've had. And I don't really know why it was so easy. Me either. Like, the questions maybe just weren't, I, 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 I don't know. I know for the all of us that didn't pass the first time, I think that we just took this one more seriously. Yeah. Then, um, so we, I, I feel like I was more prepared for this one. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I I don't know, but quite a few people did get a hundred on this one, and then everybody passed except for one person, and I just. I just want to slap him across his face really not because like to be mean but like to wake him up like you know the information stop second-guessing yourself stop clicking the back button go with your first initial thought like it ruins you so now this is the second exam that he has um, failed so he's gonna have to do the retake tomorrow and he got an 88 like one question away from passing and it's just like this test was easy you know like I feel like at least at least five people got 100 out of our now 21 people in our class so that happened oh and we had the pv this morning the procedural validation on the embryo 145 where we um did a emergency exit whatever whatever scenario whatever whatever Pass that on the first go around so that was good I believe wait did he have to redo that one too no he passed that one no he passed that yeah one. he passed yeah. that one so we're on the big daddy the ERJ 175 the biggest aircraft that we fly a lovely 76 seater jet um, and I think this one is gonna take a little time for us to grasp I say us but the rest of the class to grasp <laughs> um, because these doors are arming you have to arm and disarm these doors the other two aircraft that we fly you don't arm and disarm the doors you just close them there's no slides there's no none of that so with the slide and all of that it just you have to um, check a few more indicators and just really be aware of the process before you blow a slide and lose your job so just going over it today, we had that four hour class of, what do they call it? The Spe specifics, aircraft specifics. So they do that as a class setting PowerPoint for every aircraft and tonight, today it was four hours long. 
and just verbally saying the stuff you can just see people's eyes getting big and like terrified so hopefully they have a really good way of explaining it and showing it and we'll just breeze on through it um but yeah starting tomorrow for the next what four days our class is split in half so Brittany and i are in <laughs> the second portion of the b class so we don't go to class tomorrow until 11 25. we have to our bus time is 10 55. our bus time is 10 55 but that's still the latest i think we'll ever report to class according to the current schedule so we'll get out later i think we get out at eight but you know what i'll take it i will take it because the other half of the class they go normal time like 7 30 i guess um 7 45 so i'm just gonna appreciate this sleep in or not really having to rush my breakfast and all of that um what else we do today that was it all right, we knocked out the PV, then we did. Lunch was nasty. Lunch was nasty. What did we have? Chicken uh, lunch was with lunch. No, uh, with no tortillas, like we don't live in Texas. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, on the weekends, it's like they just kind of, you know, half, 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 you know, I don't like cursing on the blog, but half ass feed us, you know, with, with put thought into the menu. They gave us some over seasoned fajita chicken that just tastes like salt so they had some <laughs> sodium <laughs> they had some charro beans up there some rice that was still sticking and wet and it wasn't supposed to be sticky rice um yeah so today's meal is just very lackluster to say the most um yeah but that was it, y'all. I'm about to take me a good little Sunday nap. It's 5:24. Dinner's at 7:30. And yeah, I'm going to sleep. So, we, wait, we have homework for tomorrow. We got to do that weight and balance sheet. We do. This whole weight and balance thing is weird for me because we didn't do this in my previous airline. Weighting and balancing. I mean, it's not hard. You literally just count the adults count the children and count whatever other things that may be on the aircraft that need to be counted but I just I don't get it I need somebody to explain to me why I gotta count the reason why, yeah. yeah it's a lot of things that are like why why yeah it's just like it's, yeah exactly like in training they just say you do you do this you do this you do this and fine I'm gonna do it look I'm gonna do it but why do I need to count you like and I know these aircrafts are smaller and the weight and balance is probably a lot more important or well, not necessarily more important but whatever what it's more technical I don't know I'm you know what I'm gonna call on and ask her let me call her now see if she answers see if we get an answer the heifer don't be answering her phone she act like she busy and she don't be doing nothing but laying in the bed with her cat let me tell you what I want to do it's the truth she not answering She ain't doing nothing but laying in the bed with the cat, I guarantee. <laughs> they canceling how to get away with murder? They canceling how to get away with murder? Like cancel? They don't cancel no Shonda shows. That's a lie in ten halves. Uh-uh. How to get away with Anyways, y'all, if Fawn calls back and I get an answer, I'll let y'all know. Nap time. Good evening, good people. <laughs> it's 9.26 p.m. and we are not just getting back. We got out of class at, well, first of all, I don't even think I've talked to y'all all day. So, we went to class at... 11.25 a.m. And it was amazing. Today was like, it was everything and more, okay? It was only 10 of us because they split our 21 person class up into two. So we had 10 people and it was just so peaceful. The learning atmosphere today, it just flowed. There was no bickering between he, she, 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 him, him. Well, no, him, him's bigger because there's only two hymns in the class. But, um, yeah. 
So we get to have that split up class again on Wednesday and Thursday. We go back to normal tomorrow, unfortunately. But then again, Wednesday and Thursday will be split. So what did we do today, Britt? Today. Uh... Oh, we did a three hour class to start general emergency. So we talked about fire. We talked about decompressions. And we, t what was the other topic? Uh, this your YouTube channel, not mine. I don't know. Talk to the people. <laughs> <laughs> nah. What are we talking about? Fire decompressions. That was it, wasn't it? What's the yeah. other EME? Man managing decompressions. Managing decompressions and general emergency, and general really. General emergency. Uh -huh. And then so, we did the, yeah. the normal door. Whatever's under general emergency, we talked about it. Um. Then we did normal <sighs> door opening or operations. <sighs> Yes, normal door operations we learned today. So that's on the ERJ-75, the Embraer 175 Our aircraft. Our last aircraft. The last plane we have to learn. Um, and this is the only plane that we fly that you arm and disarm the doors. So there's more components that we have to learn. Um, yeah, once again for me, I've flown a plane very similar the door is exactly the same I just gotta get old verbiage out and new verbiage in which really shouldn't be that hard but for whatever reason it is so but we don't have our PV over that until Wednesday today is Monday so I have a day to get it together and I feel like when they so what they do is they show us first. They show us in slow mode, then they show us in fast mode. And I think when they showed us in fast mode, a few of our classmates kind of got overwhelmed with the procedure. Um, which is semi understandable because I had to stop and think and go back to two years ago when I was first learning it and doors were very overwhelming. Because it's it, like the way it's written out and the way it's explained, it seems like this whole ordeal. And at the end of the day, it's really not. Like, you do four steps four times. You just repeat them four times. It's, it's more annoying than anything. Um, and then just in the procedural way when we're learning it, they want you to be verbal about it. And they want you to use the correct verbiage and point. And when verbatim. you're out, yeah, verbatim. Yeah. And when you're actually out on the line, you're not talking to nobody. You're just saying this stuff in your head. You know, you just... Brrr, bop, 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 bop. It's good. So, anyways. Yeah. Um, I think our class is really starting to realize, though, that stuff is per the... I-P-M. Yeah. Um, we had a study session the other night, and I had to... Ooh. You know, just encourage them to learn from their IPM, their in-flight procedures manual. Other airlines may call it whatever we call it, a FAM at JetBlue, flight attendant manual. But at the end of the day, it's your Bible. It literally has everything that you need to know in there. Everything that we're tested on. And the funny thing is, is that I said that the other night, right? I said this in our study group. Everything that we're tested on comes from the IPM. What did our instructor say today in class? Everything you're tested on comes from the IPM. So I don't know what it is about the IPM that kind of puts people... I don't know. I... One of our instructors got a little flustered today because he was telling us to... Um, he was telling us about something in the IPM. And it's in there. You just got to look for it. And so they were like, well, we don't see this. We don't see this. We don't see this. And Johnny and, won't tell you. A bit. And our instructor <laughs> won't tell you. And he was just like, he's not telling us, like, he's not telling this page for page where to find things in the IPM because he shouldn't have to. You know, like, you need to learn how to use and read your IPM. The other instructors have been like, okay, it's on this page, da, 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 which isn't a bad thing. By no means is it a bad thing. But it kind of, what's the word? It enables us a little bit or makes us lazy, I guess you could say. And we are not doing the work on our own to find the information that we need to find. And once again, we fly one flight attendant aircrafts. You by yourself. 
you're by yourself. So who are you going to talk to about this IPM when you by yourself? Nobody but you. So anyways, that's just what I really tried to emphasize to them when we were studying the other night. But they wasn't really trying to hear me. At all. They, <laughs> they paid you all of the dust, okay? It went in one ear and out the other. It was like, like okay, Alexa, but we still going to write these questions. Was, okay, sis, so, and? Like, and? You did all that for what? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, I mean, I understand. Like, I really do get it. Like, you're in training and the emphasis is pass the test, pass the test, pass the test. Then when I make it to the line, I can figure it out. But, you know, once you have a little experience in this, you know that you want to learn as much as you can before you get to that line. Like, you, the, you, and when I say line, for those of you all that don't know flight attendant lingo, before you actually start flying, you know. That's what line means before you get out there and fly the birds. So, anyways, that's just a little tangent because today when she said that in class, I just wanted to jump up and scream and shout hallelujah, praise the Lord. I yeah, I know, I saw you. I was like, mm -hmm. me and Brittany was like, she said that. And nobody, and then we, even when she said it, nobody, it's like they are not yeah. connecting that your IPM has all the information. All the answers. All the information you ever need to know. I think, um, what's it called? Uh, are we using names? No. Um, the one classmate that I was sitting by today. Uh-huh. She's realized that, because she didn't take any She didn't take notes any notes. Today, and she was just like, I'm gonna read my, my IPM. IPM. Good, good. And Good. you see, like, when we were doing the door, she was like, she was re in yeah. her IPM. I think it's finally clicking because what's his name is emphasizing, and he's really the only instructor that continually, continuously says mm -hmm. it's in your IPM. It's in your IPM, you know, and I think it needs to be done more so people I can agree. realize that the IPM is what you follow. If it ain't in the IPM, it ain't right. Anyways, that's my little, little tangent. I don't think I really went off on no other tangents this whole two weeks. Y'all, we only have nine more class days left. Eight. It's eight tomorrow. Eight. Tomorrow. So today has ended. So eight. Eight more class days. Plus we have four days blocked for our IOE. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, really. And then graduation day, thirteen. If you really, for until, graduation is August 7th. But nine more days of actually being in a classroom setting and i am so excited about that because i'm ready to get about these classrooms Me just waking up every day doing homework studying testing da -da 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 -da. oh did you tell the people that um uh, you didn't get your base transfer <laughs> i really forgot i really came to terms with it i did so i didn't get my base transfer So, uh, yeah, so text message came through on my watch today in class that I should not be looking at. Don't look at y'all. Don't, don't get, don't, don't be like me. Don't follow me. Um, and my friend that was in a five ten training class graduated two classes ago, two months ago in May. She texted me and was like, base transfers in. All my classmates got their transfers to Dallas. And so I was like, is there anybody on my class from there? And she was like, nope. <laughs> she was like, but y'all coming. She was like, it's only been two months for us. So I'm giving hope that, so that transfer is for the beginning, that's starting September. So whoever got that transfer will still have to be in that base for the month of August. And then September, they'll get to the base. So I'm hoping our transfers will come and we will be able to get back to DFW by October is what I'm hoping for. November the latest because what's happening now is that we're going into fall and you start having what we call snowbirds in the aviation industry that will leave a wind colder city in the winter and go back to somewhere where it's a little warmer. Um, you find a lot of that in aviation and that's just a lot of senior people because they have the ability to do so. Seniority is what rules the aviation world and as much as I really don't like to say it, they deserve it. They done put in all these years, do do what you want. 
so I'm hoping that doesn't really hinder my transfer I hope we don't start seeing a lot of people um, getting back to DMW um, but if so I'm really just praying that I'll be out of there by 2020 um, now what I'm really trying to figure out now is this whole living situation thing I know I haven't even touched on crash pads because my previous experience I didn't live in the crash pad except for like three weeks not even a no, it's, let's just say a month, but I wasn't even there for a month. Uh, actually, I was because I paid two rents. But it was like, anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, so, I have family in Chicago. My dad's side of the family. Um, my sister lives in Chicago. Um, and then, oh, it's too late to call now. I was supposed to call. I'll call tomorrow when we get out earlier. My um, aunt and my cousin live there. And I'm pretty sure I have more family there that I'm just not thinking of in the moment. So what I'm trying to decide, our lovely airline, this is the only airline that I know that does this. If you work for an airline and they do this as well, go ahead and comment down below and let me know. Um, but they provide us four commuter hotels a month. So what that means is... If you are in to be to be classified as a commuter, you have to live 49 miles plus away from your assigned base. So clearly, since my permanent address is in Houston, Texas, and my assigned base is in Chicago, that's more than 49 miles. Um, that classifies me as a commuter. So with that, they are willing to give me four hotels a month for. If I commute in the night before, I have an assignment, whether that is reserve or an actual trip. Um, or like the night after a trip, if I can't make a flight home. Or I guess during my reserve period as well. So, so from what I'm, what I semi understand is like I can't, I can't just use the commuter hotels on my off days, you know? Like I, like, I can't be off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then on reserve Friday. So I can commute in Thursday night. They'll give me a hotel, and then I go on reserve Friday. But I can't be off Tuesday, Wednesday, and still ask for a hotel. It doesn't work that way. Um, but I'm, I hope I explained that good enough for y'all to get that. Um, but they give, they, they give you four commuter hotels a month. So, which really isn't enough because on reserve, there's no guarantee of when you'll be flying, how much you'll be flying, what days you'll need. You know, there's no guarantee. So, I need to figure out if I want to just bite the bullet, um, add an additional bill to my life of probably $300 for a crash pad, or if I want to figure out a different living situation, you know, maybe crash with family a little bit the other thing is I just need to know you know how far they live from the airport because is it going to be better for me to stay with them you know m probably complimentary you know rent free but still have to provide myself transportation to the airport i.e. uber or you know I guess Chicago has a transit system that's pretty good but it still costs money so that would still come out of my pocket or pay I found a crash pad today that was 225 actually and it's a hotel crash pad so it's actually in a hotel but it's set up as a crash pad um, it's called hotel crash pad let me tell y'all uh, I'm doing a lot of talking tonight excited today was just a good day it was an easy day hotel crash pad network on Facebook is what it's called hotel crash pad network and they have these hotel crash pads um not just in chicago in a lot of different cities it seems like it's something new but they are expanding 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 so you can go to hotel crash pad crash hotel crash pads.com i'll put it down here um but yeah um, that's pretty cool and there was another hotel one that I found as well so it's 225 for the month um, and they take reserves so the, the most nights that you can spend I think they were saying was like 14 nights 
a month, which is which is good. That's that's perfect. It's probably more than what I really need. But this one was specifically hot beds. So a hot bed is you are the bed does not belong to you and you only. You will share this bed with multiple people. Uh, like it's not your bed. Like it's just a you sleep there one night, somebody else may be sleeping there the next night. Basically a you know, who comes first type of deal. Uh, so but with that with it being a hotel crash pad the hotels are usually they pick hotels that are very close to the airport which means the hotel shuttles will drop you to and from the airport um, so that will cut out um, a lot of money that I would be paying in transportation to get to the airport so I just really need to weigh my options um, but yeah I'm tired of talking now I don't think I have anything else to tell you I'm sleepy we go to class tomorrow at, um, bus comes at 8, class starts at 8.30. And we get up at a pretty decent time. I need a haircut, as y'all can see. So I'm going to go try to find me a barber in Dallas. Um, anyways, that's all I got for y'all. Good night.